YouTube recently I've received uh, numerous comments and numerous private messages from the same guy. He claims he's from a university and he wants to do a research study into how blind and visually impaired people interact with others on social media. He posted his email address in the comments and when you post your email address in the comments it makes me suspicious. I personally wouldn't do that because my email address is private and I wouldn't want a lot of spam. So if you are a genuine person and you genuinely want to do a research study into how blind or visually impaired people interact through social media, I apologise. I haven't answered the comments because I wasn't sure whether or not it was genuine. Um, but this guy does have a good point and he does have a good question. How do blind and visually impaired people interact with others in social media? Do we have to do it in a different way? Is it something that's difficult for us to do? Um, are we capable of having normal conversations with other people through social media? There's all kinds of questions that able-bodied people have probably when it comes to learning how somebody with a disability uses a computer and uses a smartphone to to use their so social media that's normal it's totally fine to be curious and because the in the question and the research study in general to me is quite interesting although i'm not going to take part in it i will make this youtube video and i will publish it so that you guys can learn something from it i find it quite interesting so i hope you guys do too whether you're blind, visually impaired, deaf or in a wheelchair, um, it doesn't really make a difference. These people are still normal people. We still have feelings and emotions, we have hobbies, we have interests, likes and dislikes. Um, everything that able-bodied people have when it comes to communicating and having a conversation, we have. So we can have, we are capable of having normal adult-to-adult -adult conversations with other people. That's, that's easy and that's no problem. Where it becomes difficult is when our limitation, for example, I have the visual impairment, I'm actually almost blind. Um, when it comes to the limitation, it has to be done differently. So if I want to use my computer to upload a YouTube video or have a conversation with someone on Facebook, I need accessibility tools in order to make that work. Uh, there are different accessibility tools for different visually impaired people. There is something called a braille display which you can connect by Bluetooth and it allows uh, people who read braille, especially deafblind people who cannot use speech and cannot use their eyes to see the screen. It's very useful for them because they can everything that is uh, visible on the screen can be relayed by a, a, a tactile braille display and they can still read it by touching the braille. I don't have one of those so I cannot show you how that works. What I do have is a Mac in front of me and over here too I have an iPhone and I'm going to show you what I do with my Mac and iPhone so that I can get through my social media. Um, as soon as I touch the computer it's going to start talking and it will start talking to you in Dutch. Some of you who speak Dutch will probably recognize what it's, what it's saying. If it isn't talking too fast, many people who are sighted and listen to this claim it talks way too fast and they cannot follow it. But for me, it's I can, I'm used to this, so it's, it's a good speed for me. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna turn the computer around for you guys and I'm gonna try to operate it upside down, which is fun. I have a YouTube page open and I have voiceover switched on. Voiceover is the inbuilt text to speech uh, software that Apple puts in all of their products actually. So in the phone, in their iPad, in their watch even that I have on my wrist, all of them speak. Uh, and I have something called QuickNav which is um, a quick navigation tool which allows me to scroll through web pages just by using the left and the right arrow on the keyboard and through YouTube at the moment I can do that. Hoofdgedeelte twee onderdelen. Kopniveau twee twee onderdelen. Koppeling. Casey Meistad. Koppeling. Alles afspelen. Oh look, there's a pra there's a playlist from Casey. I'm not looking at the screen at the moment either, which is quite fun for you guys. So you can see it can be totally done without looking. Niet geïnteresseerd. Knop. Oh, there's a not interested button, so if I don't want to watch Casey or see him on my homepage, I could click that. Later bekijken, knop. And there's a, a section with later watched. Kopniveau 3, koppeling. Watch later. Even dik en voor aan en dan sweer. Koppeling. 
Kazi Wijstad. Abonneren, afmelden, afmelden. Een uh, subscribe button vergeet je. Maar als je kan zien op de screen is lots of information. En the more uh, every time I click this button, it goes to the next step in the information. I do know that there's a voiceover cursor on the screen, so if you guys can see it, I'm not sure. There's a black line surrounding the object on the screen that voiceover is reading to me. And that's basically how I navigate a website. There are also shortcuts for voiceover which makes it quicker. I can jump to headings. Um, I can, there's a button that allows me to jump to lists. There's another shortcut that allows me to find different buttons on a website and stuff like that. So I don't have to scroll through every single element on the screen to find my way around. I can jump to specific uh, places on a website, which is helpful if you know the website already. On my Mac, Facebook and Twitter, I do a little bit differently because there's so much information on the Facebook webpage and there's so much information on the Twitter webpage that I find it confusing. So I, I have apps installed on my computer for Facebook and Twitter and the apps actually look a lot like the phone apps. So if you have an iPhone or Android device and you use Twitter or Facebook on there as an app, they look exactly the same on my computer and I'm going to turn it around because I've learned recently that I suck at using a keyboard when it's upside down so I'm just going to switch to my Twitter app by hitting command and tab and I will turn it back around again for you guys so that you can see now on the right hand side of the screen I think there's now a Twitter app and it's all streamlined all the information looks exactly the same as it would on the phone and I can do exactly the same thing I can use quick nav to scroll for everything there's a button for new tweets Visuele handicap, 1 minuut geleden. Last S lanceert publieke beta met ondersteuning voor Android Oreo's in veel hul. FB met 1 in 8.3. Schuifgedeelte. Tabel. Stel nieuwe triple, stel nieuwe triple, knop tabel. Visuele handicap, 1 minuut geleden. Last S lanceert publieke beta met ondersteuning. Silence. Um, with some of the elements in Twitter and also on a website, you have to go a level further to work with the elements. So the Twitter split up right now into different parts. There's a button, there's a, a table and there's a something he calls a schuifgedeelte. I do believe that's the buttons on the left hand side of the Twitter app that he's talking about. You can uh, activate each one of them separately so that you know what you're doing. So I'm just going to turn my computer around again. So there's a table and if I uh, activate the table I can scroll through all the tweets that are on the screen. So Lucas is posting a new blog. Nathalie shares her tweets on hashtag Active Team and Vinnie Tees aan Big Issue for Mani Blind and Parshani Sicht at People. RNIB is sharing a blog. Twee minuten geleden. Update met Bill Steenwijk. Het treinverkeer kan nog niet hervat worden. There's problems with the trains at the NS. So I can read all of my tweets this way. There are other ways which I can access my computer. I can turn the colors on my screen around by pushing uh, uh, command option and F7. And it says to me that the screen is switched to white on black. And if I turn it around for you guys, you can now see that the colors are inverted. This makes everything easy. All the elements on the screen are now easier for me to see. With this print size, I still cannot read it, but I can see more of what's on the screen this way. And if I really want to see more of the elements, I do a command option and F6. And it zooms in on the screen really big. I still cannot really read it. That's the, that's the idea of having voiceover is to read the things that I cannot read. I guess if I get really close I might be able to make out what the letters are but that's going to give me a headache. That's why I use voiceover. But now the screen is really big and I can move the cursor around and it goes a little bit too quickly for you guys I think but if I move the cursor around on the screen it's easy to find. There's a, there's a arrow button here. I'm not quite sure what it's doing because I'm trying to look at it upside down. But there's an arrow button here. Here is a YouTube logo. And I go further to the right. And we can scroll further for the YouTube page. And if I go further, that Twitter thing is still in view. Look with all of the tweets that we were just reading before. 
So if you have a little bit of vision, some people use this permanently and don't use voiceover. I couldn't do that, it would drive me insane. So that's basically how I use my Mac with social media. And I'm going to show you very quickly how I use my phone with social media. And that's basically the same thing. Actually, I have all the settings already set up on my phone. So I've clicked the home button three times. And I'm going to scroll, I'm going to make voiceover read to me because it's very quiet at the moment and I want to turn up the volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two fingers and I'm going to swipe downwards on my screen. And now I can actually scroll from left to right. So it's basically the same action as with the quick nav on the computer, but this time I'm using my finger. And I want to go find Facebook, so I'm going to go the other way. And to activate it, I'm, to activate it, I'm going to double tap it. No. So now I can read everything that's on my Facebook and I can do exactly the same things that you guys do. I can click like, I can leave reactions, I can open Messenger and type to people in Messenger. A little bit of a pain in the backside with voiceover on a touch screen, but it does work. It takes a little bit longer because you have to swipe your finger over the screen to find the keys. Then you have to let go of a key and you have to do this process 10,000 times to type in your message which I personally find really irritating, but I can do it, and I do do it quite often. So um, that, that's just how it is. We can, I can show you that I can click like on something. So it's a post from Have Wheelchair Will Travel, and if I, I believe if I tap the screen with two fingers... Yeah, I've double tapped the screen with two fingers and now I have a menu. And the first option in the menu is like. Double tapping on the first option in the menu has like the post from Have Wheelchair Will Travel. So I can absolutely do the same things. I can absolutely and completely do the same things on my computer and my phone that everybody with normal vision can also do including having a normal conversation with you guys. If that's what you want, I can chat to you, that's no problem. If you'd like to know more about what we do besides YouTube, you can check out our website. Just go to www.justconnect.eu. If you'd like to follow us on social media and be the first to know when we upload a new video, my Twitter account is Wheelie Cody and Jessica's Twitter account is Hobo Photography. Thanks for watching guys. Until the next video, bye.